Hey everyone, welcome back, Coast to Coast Podcast. Me, my man Tori, we're here on episode 35. It's about quarter of the way through the NHL season in 2021, and things they're just going along. Uh, how how are you doing, Tori? Well, um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to get this thing started. I know. I know. I know there's a topic that uh, I'm going to be quite passionate about. Um, I think maybe we should leave that to the end. I think we should maybe tackle. Do it a little reverse order. I think maybe should we should do the three stars first this week, and oh. then uh, then hit up the topic at the end. All right, sounds good. I know we don't have too much to go over this week, so there's a little bit of a heated uh, discussion on one thing. We'll get to that near the end then, and we'll kick things off with our favorite segment of the podcast: the three stars of the week. Three stars. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. For this, for this, uh, we typically I'll, I'll kick things off here. Um, for my third star, of, so this is really like the past seven days. My third star, I'm giving to Jean Gabriel Peugeot. Uh, he was a big part of the Islanders uh, coming in, um, taking care of business over these past couple of games. Uh, they had had some trouble scoring, so before this, so he came in, got five goals and assists in, over a four-game span. I don't think any of them were game winners, but uh, there was a two-goal game at least twice, so I'm giving it to him as my third star of the week. Um, for me, number two, uh, kind of surprised. Uh, didn't think he would. He's kind of under the radar, one of those players that you don't really appreciate until he's on your team. Jordan Stahl, five goals in four games. Um, Carolina, top of the division, so think he's one of those depth players that's really showing in the depth of Carolina and I just wanted to give it to him um, mm-hmm. had some impact goals on uh, some close games and he had big goal uh, yesterday's game where they ended up losing but they can't oh wait I said they are top of the division but if they lost yesterday that means Florida's top of the division so yes actually that's true because yep. Florida beat them yeah yep. yep Florida's top of the division which but, wait didn't somebody call that? Uh, it's all lies. Too many postpones. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not gonna get into that. But, I know. I know. <laughs> but but for my first star of the week, we gave him the shun last week. Um, said some things. He, we gave him honorable mention this week, last week. Jonathan Huberdeau. Two weeks now. He's uh put up 13 points over the past two weeks. Florida's on a roll. They're top of the division. <laughs> and uh, I'm just giving it to him. Um. What can you say? He's basically getting a point a day, and some of those days he's not even playing. So Mm -hmm. I'm giving my top marks to him. And overall, the Florida Panthers are they're definitely the hottest team, uh, running Mm -hmm. good right now. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 intriguing and interesting to watch what's happening with their goalie situation. Yeah. Um, because game by game, it seems like Dreger or Dredger. I don't know how to actually say it properly. I think it's Dredger. Um. He's a bigger guy. He's calmer in the net. He doesn't lose his net as much. I don't. I can't comment on the puck handling, but I believe that he's better than Bobrovsky. So all those components as your goalie with a team that is, let's call it surprising a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's an interesting situation to watch. And moving forward, I, I don't know anymore what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And maybe Florida looks at... at potentially trading Bobrovsky for another one of those immovable contracts. Like maybe San Jose and Florida hook up on a deal, Eric Carlson for Bobrovsky. Yeah. Who knows? It'll be interesting what that, what they do. And like you said, Dredger, Dreger, uh, they've been going to him uh, this week Mm -hmm. specifically. I think he played back-to-back games and then they have a back-to-back. I wouldn't read into that too much because that's what Florida has been doing. Quenville likes to do that. He doesn't like where he just puts a goalie in for one game. So a lot of times, whether it's three and then two or four and then two, five and two, whatever, he t- he likes to give his guys that aren't a chance clearly to his get backups. Some going, yeah. yeah, just go bang, bang, unless it's a back-to-back or something, right? So mm-hmm. uh, I think that's the third time already this year that Dredgers got two games in a row. Yep. So I don't, at this point, I don't really read into it. However, you know, moving forward, how would that pattern changes? I think we'll see something change. Um, but the two games in a row, I don't think is much to read into. Okay, sorry, I, I had a panic attack for a second there. Uh, something completely fantasy Why is related. That? It's fantasy related. I'll, oh, I'll, okay. I'll tell it after. Let's finish these three stars up. Okay. 
Perfect. So speaking of Dredger, that's actually who... Uh, oh, wait, no, I don't want to skip my third star. I thought that's who I had as three. Um, I actually have Ilya Sorokin as third star. Um, I'm not going to lie, I kind of struggled because I went to go pick the stars and I kind of had them and then I saw who you had. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you touched on a, got a lot of good points. Uh, Pajot, as usual, slow, starts a little slow and then all of a sudden just comes on ridiculously hot and then will settle into his spot. Excuse me, Jordan Stahl is really a bit of a unicorn player um, yeah. because he's one of those guys who can do everything and he can even drop the gloves. And I think this year specifically where he kind of is that two and a half center, so sometimes two, sometimes three center, I think it really comes in handy because he can win you face-offs. He can be that shutdown centerman. And you know what? If somebody's being a nuisance, he can also drop the gloves and kind of put them in their place for the most part. Um, I know I'm kind of doubling on your stars a little bit, but I just wanted to touch on... Those no, it's all good. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because, like, I did look at goalies. I had a tough time, so I, I know you like to look at mine and then make kind of because so we don't have the same one. So I, I always mm -hmm. get the benefit of going first. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So and then you tend to come in and kind of give the goalies the props they need. Um, for me, mm -hmm. goalies. It's it was hard this week for me because most of them had two games at best. Yeah, yeah, it was hard, and this week there was really only a small. There was really only four or five names to pick from. Mm -hmm. And when I picked Sorokin, I was stretching a little bit. If he didn't get the shutout, I don't know who I would have picked. Um, just because he had the shutout, he had a really good game. I was watching the game. He made five or six really nice saves. And, like, he's clearly an acrobatic goalie. And he's – he's. you know how in baseball, not to jump out of sports here, but you know how in baseball there's guys, you know, that have a little bit more swag? Yeah. Other sport just has a little bit more swag coming up with his batters, with his pitchers, whatever – he brings a bit of that to the Islanders. And I think it's good for them because for a market like the Islanders who are maybe struggling a little bit for attention or they don't have a marquee player, I think it's a draw factor for somebody to come in and be like, hey, catch up, like catch this goalie. Like he's entertaining to watch yeah. and he's good. So yeah. it's it's I, I don't know. I, around him coming in too. Absolutely. He's won I think he's won like three I think it's called Gargarian Cups, so championship in, in Russia. Okay. I think he's been the MVP a couple times. Like, he's he's legit. I mean, the one thing with me and a lot of people that overlook or where the hype has to be reined in on goalies, is specifically from Europe, is that goalies, 99% of them are taught basically from their net out. Like, they, they have to have their net, and then they use angles. So when you come out, you know the certain angle based on – where your chest is pointing and what you're looking at you come yeah. over from europe and you come to north america the rink's smaller so that fraction of a difference of being like oh is my sh no it's, it's slightly changed like usually i'm towards my bench like okay i know if i'm looking at my coach i've got my angle but then now maybe the coach is six feet further down and then he's off that half inch meanwhile there's space here but he thinks in his mind i've got my angle yeah. so there's that adjustment phase of knowing like i don't think it's necessarily reference points that they use as angles i'm just using that to try and illustrate the photo or the, the, the of what i'm talking about mm -hmm. um but with, with that being said i think it's way more challenging because of that for goalies to come over and be successful right off the hop um so it's it's interesting to see that he's come along slowly but he's starting to get his angles you can see they're still not there entirely which leads to him being out of position but then he's athletic enough and understands the game enough that he can get a limb there, which okay. is why it's so entertaining. So I think he's going to be a goalie to watch. And I think that's why Varlamov is having the season he is so far is because he knows like this kid's good. Yeah. Like I don't want to have my spot taken from me again. So like I, I gotta, I gotta play good and either get traded out of here. So I keep playing or like, I don't want this kid taking my spot. Right. He knows, totally, he knows yeah. he's legit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's why I would go with third star for him. Second star, we go back to Florida there, Dredger. Uh, he's 2-0, and one, one win against Tampa, and one win against Carolina. So I believe that's two and three in the division, I believe. Um, so winning against your two top competitors is pretty big, yep. especially when uh, Bobrovsky led in, I think it was six against Tampa the night before or the game before. Uh, he came in and kind of stabilized the force a little bit. And uh, there was some interesting quotes. I don't have them off the top uh, of my head or anything, but uh, they were just basically asking Quenville about the uh, the coach, about the goal sending situation. Yeah. And he basically said that 
he he insinuated that money isn't going to be what dictates who gets and starts. So reading between the lines, he's basically saying, Bobrovsky, get your shit together because, like, I'm not going to play you just because you make seven, eight, whatever. Yeah, not, eight realistically, that's how it should be. Oh, yeah. And that's that's just feeding into this whole belief that there's no point committing to goalies because really long term what goalie has outplayed his contract in the cap era i don't know if there's been one yeah even carrie price he hasn't outperformed his contract maybe he's performed up to it when he's been his vesna candidate and when he got the contract but like he, he i would argue that he's not yeah usually like in theory, like, you got to look for the goalies that are on the, like, backup level or, like, their first contract. They're going to they're gonna outperform it, but when it comes time for them to sign their first real contract, then most of the time, like you said, it's hard It's hard to live up past it. But I think I think that the – like, if I had to project forward, I, what I see the NHL going with is this is the start. We're seeing it right now with this whole platoon thing. Yeah. Like, it's being forced because the cadet the schedule – and with all, all the COVID stuff and everything, it's being forced a little bit, um, you but and I it's were not going to stop. It like before COVID, even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, it, it's definitely going there because, like, sports science it tells us this. It's the same. It it's the exact same reason why starting pitchers don't go nine innings anymore, or why a lot of batters get taken out in the seventh inning for other people. It's just science, sports science numbers yeah. saying that you'll save injury. They'll perform better. They'll be fresher. Whatever it is you're targeting, it's almost always going to turn up more positive if you have a platoon. Mm-hmm. Plus, if you think about it and you're like, okay, I'm putting 90% of my eggs in this basket and that basket has a bad season or gets hurt or gets COVID and can't play or gets some sort of other illness or something that can't play, look at like a John Tavares or something like that. Or sorry, um, a Jonathan Taze. Uh, who is just not playing right now because of other medical issues. Um, You never know, right? And I think it's bad. I think it's bad for the sport because a lot of players don't want to be goalies. And a lot of young people playing hockey, most people can't afford to play hockey these days, let alone get goalie equipment to grow up with. Like, you need six sets of pads probably yeah between where you start and whatever that's that's ten thousand dollars minimum it's and definitely we're not a playing big, we're talking big investment early on. yeah oh, big 100%. Commitment, yeah, yeah and, and that's the thing is that like a lot of goalies if it goes that way and they're like well unless i'm the elite of the elite of the elite my best case situation is a platoon well if i'm a platoon goalie nobody's going to be getting seven plus million anymore it'll yeah. be five six million so the money isn't going to be to be made in the goalie position within hockey which will not drive more yeah. kids to want to be goalies yeah. which then could create poor prospect pool or player pool of goalies which then we could see a shift in the skill of the game yeah. skill even though it's just more goals going in because of and then do you change the size of the puck or the size you know what yeah, you know what i mean you get into these, all these other conversations ripple effect do that yeah so yeah that's the one thing that makes me a bit nervous about the whole goaltending thing um with platoons but i mean that being said obviously i gotta give the recognition to dredger and i i do think he's gonna take the net uh from bobrovsky and i don't know what they're gonna do i know i mentioned that randomly there carlson for um uh, carlson for bobrovsky but like pick yeah, any no, team no, that has a be anyone, monstrous yeah. contract right um but i i i think that's the only solution and Maybe solution for multiple teams, but we'll see. Um, but moving to the first star for me is uh, Cam Atkinson from uh, Columbus. Yeah, consider him. Good pick. Excuse me. Yeah, he had three goals, four assists, and I believe three games, maybe four games. I can't remember Yeah. Um, what the number was off the top of my head, but either way. Uh, he also had 15 shots on goal, was which was tied for the league lead uh, over the last seven days. So uh, I know he's playing on the top line right now with Roslovic and Line. Yeah. Um, so I I was waiting to see if it was him or Bjorkstrand to get that spot moving forward, and it looks like Atkinson might got might have got that position. So I mean, he might be kind of just as ready to boom here for a few weeks, few games, however you want to say it, as Peugeot is 
um, just because of what's going on. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, my first. It's interesting and third how star. he's popped off a little bit now that he's playing with Lonnie. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. it's just that extra space he has. They're not draping over him as being the the, the big forward on that line, like because now they have all these other guys to contend to. And even Roslovich has he's had a big performance since he's come to there. And Columbus has, I think, uh, that they're, they continue to roll and they're they're going to be a threat. They're definitely a much bigger threat than I gave them credit for at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about Roslovic specifically with Columbus is he's an Ohio boy. Yep, he grew up a Columbus fan, yep. which it's it's kind of weird saying that now that Columbus has been around long enough <laughs> for kids to have come through the system to say they grew up Columbus fans. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. And that concludes our three star segment of the, the week. Three stars. Ooh, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, all right so i mean now that we're, we've done that i think we need to get to the gold freaking helmets what was that nhl i don't know i don't think the nhl has anything you're to a do vegas fan. yeah um well first of all i watch every vegas game for the most for the most part i don't it's like my equivalent to you watching the leafs uh it's me in vegas and when i turned on the first game with the gold helmets it was just a shock first of all no one saw it coming and they were there and they're hideous um my fiance who watches the games with me she is all about the fashion and makeup and all that stuff and she was outraged terrible terrible helmets i took uh vegas five periods before they were able to score a goal with the, the golden helmet and, so, and they're owing two yep. so in a city like vegas um we're not sure if we're going to see them again <laughs> because of the bad luck, but I don't know. From what I was hearing in the last broadcast, it might be the helmet that they wear when they're wearing their gray jerseys now, too. So I, I don't know. I think they're trying to incorporate gold more into their unis because they're the third uni being the gold one. Um, it started making its debut this season, so I I, I don't like them. I, I, I think they just clash too much. They look as Kristina would say, C-3PO-esque. Um, they look like Star Wars on ice. Um, it just looks weird. It's a weird thing. And But here we are, different. I feel like Old Man Jenkins, something different, and I'm complaining. So, And, like, I don't hate the fact they tried. Mm -hmm. I don't hate the fact that they're doing something different, something new, something that a lot of other teams would say, no way, we won't do that. Yeah. I will give them credit, respect for that, absolutely. The reason I don't like them mostly is, I'm not sure if you or other people are aware, but in Europe, if you are the top goal scorer on your team, you wear a gold helmet. No, I did not know that. So throughout Europe, or it may just be like the top couple leagues or whatever it is, but if you're the top goal scorer on your team, the goal scorer, not point getter, goal scorer, um, you wear a gold helmet. Okay, I, I like that. One, so, so one person on the ice has a different helmet than the rest of his teammates? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, for me, and they've done it for a while. So, like, for me, it's kind of – it's a bit of a ripoff. Mm -hmm. In this – in it, not – like, I'm not ripping them on it. I'm just, like – Yeah. Like I don't know. It's, it's kind of like they've taken something and tried to make it their own. Well, if North, that like sense. the average of North American fan, like I'm more than an average North American fan. I didn't know that. So like <laughs> most people, I'm, I'm going to give the benefit and say they don't know it. So like, it, hmm. but for that, I guess I didn't know that. So I can yeah. see, I can see that. Um, yeah. Well, it's just, it's kind of weird. I mean, I thought it was like, <sighs> takes away from their jerseys that they're wearing. I find. It does. It does. I, I love their jerseys and I think it makes it kind of, it makes it ticky tacky. It makes it, um, it's like, uh, have you seen the San Jose jerseys that they just released? No. They were basically designed by children. So like, there's <laughs> like color marks and like the shark is like all like off. I don't know if it actually was designed by children, but it, uh, it, it, looks, it like looks like it was specifically designed to make it look this way but there's like it looks like crayon drawing and stuff on on the jersey and the shark's like off-centered and like bubbly and it looks trash like it looks hack it looks like somebody said okay we have an hour 
We have an hour, folks, and it's the two of us. We were supposed to have five of us, but we have an hour, and it's two of us. What can we make up? This is what we got, Coach. Great, let's do it. That, like, that's that's what I think of San Jose, and I feel like I don't know if maybe it just needs to be a duller gold. I don't know if maybe it just needs to have maybe a stripe on it. I don't know. It's just there's something it's about very it very bold that doesn't sit right. Yeah, and maybe it's just that I'm not used to it, and that's like what you said, mm-hmm. being you know, old man, whatever. But like, <laughs> old man Jenkins, I don't know. Yells at cloud. I, I watched both of the games, and like, I was very. It was very weird for me. It was very, very weird, and it threw me off. And oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know what to think. I guess really, but it just, it wasn't. It wasn't what I was expecting, and I don't know what to expect moving forward. Because like, maybe a Tampa goes with a silver, or maybe like a Nashville yeah. says, "All right, we see you. Let's go with, Bright. you know, a brighter yellow or something." I think they you know, they do wear yellow helmets sometimes, though. In that they helmet. do wear yellow helmets, yeah. but still, like, or like, I don't know. It's just like, what's 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 next, or what's what's the what's the limit? Where where do you where do you stop? Like, because the reason I say that is because the NHL has a problem. And they they uh, had a problem with their players oh. wearing custom skates. They said oh, no, the no, 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 you can't wear. Yeah, yeah, you can't. You can wear them in warm up, but you can't wear them in the game. Well, a lot of players wear the same skates they put on in the warm up. So like, you're making them put on special skates, take them off, put on other skates if they're one of those players. Yeah. So it's like, if if you if you're not gonna let people wear custom skates that maybe pay tribute to people or whatever. How can you let a gold helmet for one team? I don't know. It just I I I don't see where mm-hmm. one gets limited and the other one doesn't. I don't know. I think it's or like why you can't have gold sticks. It obviously comes down to like unity. Like they they all have the gold helmet. That's that's why, right? If they all were like all wearing gold skates, would that be allowed? Maybe as part of the Maybe. uniform. Well, so when when I was younger and I used to go to my local hockey games, um, a lot of the junior A guys would have sponsors. But back then it was kind of hush hush under the table. Yeah. So a lot of guys would spray paint their sticks black. You had no idea what sticks they were using. And fun fact for people, I don't know, if I might get in trouble for saying this, um, but hockey sticks out there. Hockey players that are playing in the NHL, their sticks are painted already. Their sticks that they use are not the top of the line sticks. They are just painted to look like the top of the line sticks, so companies can sell them to people. That makes sense. Because they think, oh my, my. Who's gonna get you call, the hockey stick company is gonna come out of now? I, 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 maybe, <laughs> maybe I don't yeah. know. I, maybe. I was told that from somebody I trust within, but basically, I could see that. My point yeah. is. Okay, well, if I'm Vegas, what's stopping me from now coming out tomorrow with gold sticks? Let's all spray paint our, spray paint our gold our sticks gold. They should. Or just have them from the manufactured. You know, how sick would it be to see um, like a Reebok or I, I don't even know. An all gold I've Reebok out, stick, yeah. I've been, <laughs> I was going to say Easton, which w- it just dates me because like I haven't CCM. looked at sticks in, like I play hockey a lot, but like I usually just get yeah. sticks um i've never I had a, i played <laughs> hockey all through high school until the end of high school i never had a stick that wasn't made of wood yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i had i had all wood and then i went to the i had the first one that was the titanium yeah with the two piece and then i had the good old yeah. z bubbles which were my favorite yeah um but yeah like i i i basically get sticks that are the reason i know this is because i get sticks that are called pro stock and pro stock sticks are basically Joe Blow, who plays for Team X in Western wherever, um, gets a stick, and he gets a hundred of these sticks, and he, after using two of them, decides I hate them, get yeah. rid of them. So then those end up wherever they end up throughout the states in North America, and I say, oh, look at that stick, it's great, but it's Joe Blow from Western wherever. Yeah, I like it, I'll take it. So like I don't look at go to the market and be like, what's this? What stick do I want? I just like look out of the selection that's there. Yeah. So like, I don't really yeah, for know sure, sticks, for sure. but it's just funny because I almost said Easton off the top of my head. And then I said Reebok, which now I don't even know if Reebok <laughs> even, or RPK yeah. even sell sticks. So I'm like, I, I don't know. But anyways. <laughs> yeah. Long story short, we're not fans of the helmets. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I, I would be intrigued to see if they do that next. Gold skates, gold sticks, yeah. gold, gold gloves. I mean, you couldn't have gold gloves, but you could have kind of gold fabric gloves. But like, what about gold? Um, uh, oh, not mouth pastes, freaking mouth guards. Mouth guards. Like, yeah. where's the limit? Where do you stop? What, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, customization. I don't know. It's, at the same time, it's kind of interesting because the creativity they're kind of allowing extra creativity and through that interesting that's kind of what i've liked about these new jerseys is that interesting weird ass colors are coming out of some of these teams like mm -hmm. some of their jerseys like mm -hmm. i i actually really like i know we talked about this the vegas red jerseys like i thought they were awesome and you're not so much so we won't go down I, that path. i will say that i think they're a jersey that if i saw in person i'd be like uh okay but on TV, no, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, it kind of it, it look a it little. kind of look like the old school uh, Sabers red jersey that had the. Oh, okay. I don't know if you remember yeah. that one, but yeah, it was very similar. Yeah, I think they also look like the red St. Louis ones that St. Louis has worn a couple times this year. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen those ones or not. So like, many jerseys. I, though, I don't know. I, I like them. Cool. I love jerseys. I'm a jersey guy. Mm -hmm. Like I, there's a lot of jerseys I like, and like. To me, if you're just going to put a name, to me, it's lazy. Like, I hate when you see Bolts or, like, Leafs or, like, Sens or, like, like you can't do something better than just a couple letters. Well, come on. The Yankees like, anybody are the, can type the, out letters. The Yankees are the prime example of a jersey. It's just... But they are good because they are what they are, and they've been that way from that time. Uh, fair enough. If they weren't from that time, like the same like the Chicago White Sox or these yeah. traditional teams that keep that the Boston Red Sox and the, forever, the Maple yeah, Leafs forever. are, I think, the only franchise in the NHL with two colors. No, Detroit. Or the only two franchises in the, in the NHL that only have two colors. The, Every other the, team has don't three colors. Don't technically have that, that green jersey that they wear once in a while? The St. Pat's, but that's in that that doesn't really count. They oh. mean on their normal jersey. Because that was the thing. And the reason why I know this is back in whatever year it was, they put the little silver lining on the TML. Yeah. On the uh, on the uh, shoulder plate. Yeah. And I think they did silver lining on the either the lettering or the logo itself. I couldn't remember. And they're like, oh, we have silver on our jersey. And then they're like, there was an outrage at the time because they're like, how could you go from a two color scheme that's tradition to a three color scheme? Wow, there was a lot of talk so about that So well, shit. like the Toronto fans, I love it. <laughs> yeah, how exactly. Could, so there is a whole mean? thing. So yeah, okay. <laughs> that's why I know that. But that's why that's the thing with me is with the Leafs is that like if they came out with the green jerseys, if they came out with that once a week, I'd be like, yo, no, like I can't watch my. Perfect example. These other Leaf jerseys that they've been wearing, these blue ones with the, the gray numbers. Mm -hmm. I swear to you, I'm watching Tampa every yeah, time. Yeah, I it's, agree. It's weird. I can't get engaged because I'm like, why am I watching a Tampa game? It's not like I'm watching my team. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, no, it, I don't totally. know. It's weird. I've gotten but... that. I got that vibe. I forget who I was watching. That I thought I was watching Dallas or I was watching Dallas. I thought I was watching someone else. I, I, one of those mm. situations where someone was wearing like Dallas's colors, I'm pretty sure. I forget who doesn't matter but mm -hmm. yeah yeah but here we are yeah um here we are <laughs> so speaking of a complete random transformation i'm going to jump into congratulating our our friend connor mcdavid friend of the podcast yes um <laughs> personal friend of the podcast <laughs> friend of the podcast uh hitting 500 points last night um, and to me, uh, the most interesting fact was going into the game, they were talking about how this was the same, this was the game in which Crosby hit five, I forget how many games it is. It doesn't matter less than 500. I'm, I'm certain. Um, but it's the same amount of games that Crosby were, had hitting his 500th point. So he managed to pull it off. To be fair, I heard this once and I didn't see it anywhere else. So if I'm wrong, I'm sorry in advance, but I'm. I got it. No, it's yeah, it's you're correct. Okay. Yeah. Same okay. amount of games. Amount of games. Uh, I was just I was trying to search my brain. I I want to say it's the number ending in 63 or 60 66 or something 67 60 something. Okay. Um but I, I was going to say 360 something but that sounds a little low. But regardless of the number, it's the same amount of games um that Crosby uh, Yeah, uh, took they're they're infinitely going to be compared to each other. So I thought it was it was 
very interesting statistic. But I think uh, given this, I think the fair bet to make would be that Connor continues at a pace that eventually surpasses uh, absolutely Crosby and absolutely that's... yep there's no there's no doubt in my mind because a obviously offense is trending upwards yeah um b like we were just talking about the goaltending doesn't seem to also be going up in that same capacity mm -hmm. um and we also got to remember that crosby missed how many yeah and that's combined exactly what in I, a game yeah that's exactly what half, I would three? at least right yeah, I don't remember, but I think it was like three. I feel like it was three. And like what you were kind of talking couple. about, the way the science is going with, and let, well, like, you know, Connor could always suffer some sort of injury as well, but like yeah. the way the athletic science is going. like, And he did miss a season because of his leg or whatever a couple of years ago. Think, too, his so very first season, that. didn't he get like Shoulder, a collarbone or leg. something? I think he broke yeah, it. Yeah, you're been right, first yes. Season. So, yeah. It yeah. is games played. Um I think given if they played the exact same amount of games, it, like they're on the same pace. So you would think that it'd be similar. Exactly. But as long as they can stay on the ice, I, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, we talked about this before. It's going to come down to how many cups he wins, how many gold medals he, he can pull off. Can he be the golden boy, the new golden child? Unless, unless the, unless Canada doesn't play in the Olympics. Cause then it's, it would be unfair to of course, compare of course. gold medals, especially now because he's missed what one, at or two one. opportunities to go to the, the Olympics. At least one. I think it's two, but I, at least one. At least one. But it's or the maybe same, he was the there same opportunity the first that Crosby would have missed as well. Crosby missed one too now. So Yes. But if they won, they both would have got one, right? Fair enough. Or plus one, I should say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they probably would be. Let's be real. I mean, if everyone's healthy, I don't think it's close right now, Canada, between other teams. Like, just from top to bottom, forwards, defense, and goalie. I don't know. Uh, I want to see the might. Olympics. I'd probably yeah, have to pick Sweden, but I just want, yeah. I just want to see the team that we put uh, together. It'd be disgusting. It would be nasty, and the, I don't know. Um, I posted actually. I don't think it was in our chat group, but I was reading today, and there was some talk about it today that um, there could actually be issues with uh, U.S. and Canada going to the Olympics. Um, there's an issue or there's concern from the um, American um, Olympic Committee uh, that they feel like their athletes and stuff won't be either treated well or fairly or they might not be safe. Um, Where is it? In Beijing. Oh, okay. Beijing. Cool. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I can't speak on this, but I don't believe, obviously, this sounds kind of ignorant, but I don't think re relations are great between... <laughs> china and states so yeah. no that, that's um, a, yeah that's a whole lot different can of worms for sure um i think yeah had, so uh, i mean if they pulled out their sorry go ahead yeah i was just gonna say if had they were definitely tensions were getting higher and higher with the last president uh who knows how this new president is always a little bit more pro china and fixing that relation that's part of what he ran on so mm -hmm. we'll see like like you said we got a couple couple of years right don't we uh i guess no i guess 2022 next year yeah next, next year. year so yeah about a, a year, year and from a half now, basically. for things to settle down and there's always the hurdle of dealing with the nhl and the nhlpa too right uh, is it not for certain that they've agreed on how that would work either definitely with the shortened season this year and having to fit it all in next year and getting it back on on track well that's there's gonna mm -hmm. be a couple more hurdles i don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves with a year and a half to wait yeah yeah there's a lot of time and there's a lot of things yeah. that can go wrong but exactly I, I i what worries me is that kind of what they were insinuating was that if the states do pull out canada probably also will mm, which so. then could lead to a different conversation where every other country would still allow their athletes and the nhl couldn't stop them so there could be a situation where all these other countries' players say peace NHL for these two weeks, and then all the other players continue, and then mm, yeah, a the gold medal and whatever is going to these other countries, and they're also saying that NBC holds holds the TV rights, mm. and they're saying well if the states and Canada aren't there, we're not televising it, so it wouldn't be televised, but then that would ruin a lot of things. So it's just like it's not certain. And yeah. it's just, I think, something people need to think about. Yeah, um, but it's not, it's not the topic we need to really go too deep on yet. For sure.
<laughs> for sure um yeah that basically wraps that up it's funny how that goes from congratulations to always, always the competition and how how good they would be uh, uh had to be on the same team I don't think we had right. anything else to really go into other than this goal no goal situation we got going on. Yes. Um, so yes. I don't know. I'll try and set the stage the best I can, but essentially we have this yeah. this goal <laughs> no goal situation. What was it? Two nights ago. Right. Yeah. Toronto versus yep. Ottawa. Joe Thornton's role. Sorry, last night. Last night. Was it? Oh, they're on back to back. Okay, so February seventeenth. It was last yeah. night. Um, I didn't see it live, and then I I just hear from you like you're you're pretty heated about. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Like, why is this? How did this happen the way it happened? And so Joe Thornton's he he gets the puck and he like goes to I don't even know like kind of like re- out in front of the net and he's. The puck gets lodged into the goalie's pads, Murray, right? Um, and he's essentially kind of like, as he's getting pushed, because he's like, the puck's loose, and as he, he's getting kind of pushed from the, and he like pushes kind of, and the pad goes into the net, and the puck goes into the net, gets waved off immediately, um, and then that's basically the end of the story on the game night of of this situation he also had another goal later that was also disallowed but irrelevant yeah. irrelevant yeah. i'm not i'm not doing a very good job of getting you set up here but either way <laughs> i'll get into i'll get into both trust yeah. me <laughs> but i but, guess uh, the, yeah. a big debate at least amongst us maybe not I and mean, you, you were saying it was talked about a lot today too in the radio yeah uh, but whether this There's a lot of people say that. was a goal or a no goal or what maybe the procedures of this entire situation were kind of not good. And that you hit on a good point that I totally agree with, given that we had that situation a week and a half ago, Carolina, Columbus, where a goal was called disallowed, but then allowed, but not allowed. It It's just creating this And whole... they didn't have a precedent to go off of, so yeah. they just didn't make the right call because it just wasn't – whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we're, we're, <laughs> we're starting to go down to this road of where it can be difficult for like you always say for the casual fan to follow along with what the hell is actually going on here one's a goal one's not a goal so i'll let you take it away from there after i poorly set this stage and, up <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that we also talked last week about the whole thing about them taking the the glass away and this whole flipping the puck over the glass and yep. how we could make it more of a black white rule as opposed to well maybe but sometimes but this time not that time kind of rule and that's the thing that frustrates me is the nhl a lot of times is well this is the rule but sometimes and other times and then we have nine rules here and then go and see the sub rule for this but sometimes there's an asterisk if that and whatever it's like okay and like my biggest problem is live when I watched the game, I was watching it and I was like, yes, that's a good freaking goal. Way to show the team how to go to the net. Mm-hmm. And then they, I saw the ref going, no goal, no goal, no goal. And I turned to my partner and I said to her, I was like, if that's not a goal, I don't know hockey. <laughs> they didn't even review it. Yeah, and it's not. And a, then that's what that's what set me off because I was like, because your reality was turned upside down because you don't know hockey apparently. Basically, and I was like, a lot of it for me is that I do I know the rule? Yes. Was the rule called correctly? Yes. Was the was the play called from an appropriate position? No. If you go and you look at the replay, mm-hmm. and what I said to you earlier, if you look at where the referee is standing, he's in the perfect position except for the fact that the goalie is between the light of the sight of vision of the ref and the puck. And the puck. Mm-hmm. So in other words, the player has created an eclipse on the puck from the referee's vision. So from the referee where he's standing there and he sees, and in his mind, oh, where's puck? I know it's somewhere right there, but I don't know. I can't see it. But now I see the goalie leg go over the line. No, that's not a goal. That's not a goal because yeah. clearly his leg got okay. pushed. 100%. I agree with that. But in that explanation, he didn't see the puck. 
And what I said to you too is how many times have you seen a referee blow the whistle dead and the puck is not smothered? It's loose. It's just he can't, he's lost sight of it, so he's got to blow it dead. Mm -hmm. So my problem is not that it made sense from his sight and from what he called, it makes sense that the goalie got shifted and it looked like his pad got pushed through. I understand the same situation that if you throw a puck on net and the goalie catches it in the gut and you come and you push him into the net, also clearly not a goal. He catches it in his glove and your stick's in his glove and you push the glove over the line, clearly not a goal. I understand all those things, right? Yeah. But in this situation, from where the camera angle was live, you could see exactly what was happening. And in that situation, if you can put yourself in Joe's shoes, he's been out for a while. They just had a shitty game against Ottawa. It's the last 10 seconds of the period, and he's a jumbo Joe. He's a big boy. He's standing in front of the net, doing exactly what he'd do. If we fast forward and that goal was scored in the playoffs, that would have been a goal. And they would have reviewed it. They would have called it a goal. It would have been a goal. So why, and my biggest problem with it, is the fact that you mentioned when the NHL did not get the call right less than a week ago and made them look foolish, they didn't even go, the referee didn't even go to make sure the call was right. And the concept of the rule, if you read it, and what I get about it is exactly that. If the goalie makes the play and you push the goalie over the line, most goaltender interference, whether it's aggressive and it's a penalty or it's just a whistle and it's no no play like i have no problem with that yeah but the problem with me is that even you said it the puck was loose yep so again if you go back to your goalie angles if murray was in the correct position and he was dropped down in the butterfly or he just came went down on his legs in the drop down position and that exact play happened he would have been planted we, they, we there would be no conversation right now and the best example I can have is pretend you're going back in a lunge and you put your one, bag, one leg back behind you. Now lift that leg off the ground about two inches and balance on the one foot. Then if you push yourself, like I just pushed myself off balance yeah. without so what, anything. You so have what no you're stability. saying is that with, like, without Joe, like he didn't like give the force that moved the leg. Like that leg is going to be moving back towards the net either way. At two one-handed, he could have gone like this just a little dainty push, and his leg still would have spun. And if the referee, referee wasn't out of position, mm -hmm. but if you went to replay or you asked the referee who had the non-obstructed view, it would have said, well, no, the puck was still live. Very much. The referee live. was not going to blow the whistle because I know that's been reviewed before. Well, yes, it, the intent to blow was there, so it didn't quite count. That wasn't the situation that we're talking yeah. about. So because the goalie's out of position in the last amount of game, if you're the defender and you're like, oh, shit, this is Jumbo Joe, you're giving him a good whack because you've got to yeah, move him, happened, right? Yeah. You're not going to be like, here, move Joe. <laughs> so, like, that's my problem is that was the call called correctly on the ice? Yes. Yeah, I agree. Was the call correct called correctly from the sight of vision? There was some assumption made within the call, but it's still correct. Mm-hmm. The fact that they he refused, and the, the fact that he was emphatically like, no, 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 and then it was just like, we're going and dropping the puck. It's like, no, go to the bench and say, hey, look, like, you know, I'm allowed to go. Did, they not, even, did they not even have like a little referee powwow or anything? It's just they, just went, they just went and dropped the puck. Because the problem is this, is that the referee would have had to go and admit, hey, he I sure. might not be right. Or I didn't see the puck. That's such. That, that's, and he won't admit that. That's such a problem just out, outside of the NHL. Even is that people just can't admit when they make a mistake. Yeah, and that and how many times have we seen the NHL come out and admit that? They didn't even say really that they made a mistake. They just made an excuse of why the rule isn't right. Okay. So, so that that's that's like and when I tried to explain the whole situation to to my partner, it's like. She doesn't care about hockey, really. Like, she follows it with me just for fun and whatever, and she likes a couple players. But, like, mm -hmm. she's a casual fan through and through. Exactly, yeah. And I have to spend 45 minutes explaining to her, like, you know, but this, but that, and but then in the playoffs, it's different. <laughs> that's, and, the like, hardest, that's the hardest That's the hardest conversation is, but in the playoffs, yeah. I yeah. know we talk about it all the time on this podcast. It's just, I really hope one season they change. They won't, but they should. They won't. And that's, that's the thing that 
annoys me because it's like we being a Lee fan, my team is more an offensive team. They rely on the power play, stuff like that. Well, come playoffs, you can't call penalties because you can't influence the game too much. But why not? Penalty, penalty, yeah. If exactly. they're uh, if they're an offensive team, the job is on the other team not to take dumb penalties and not to take penalties at all because they know this is going to hurt us. Yeah. So if it's a penalty, it's a penalty. It doesn't matter if it's a Sunday. It doesn't matter if it's a Friday. It doesn't matter if it's preseason. It doesn't matter if it's playoffs. It doesn't matter if it's a rookie. It doesn't matter if it's a veteran. If a hooking is defined in the penalty book as a hook, call it as a hook when it's a hook. And that's the thing that drives me nuts exactly, about yeah. stuff all the time. All this like makeup calls and all this other stuff that everyone just knows is there. And it's like, why? Why is all this there? And why? And I've had people tell, I've had casual fans tell me, well, if, if the game's so different, if you're telling me it's so different in the regular season from the playoffs, why do you care about the regular season? Why do you watch the regular season? Don't you just want to watch when the playoffs go? Like, if that's what you're waiting for, mm -hmm. why do you commit all the time to the regular season if it's just different come playoffs? I don't know. Why do I? I don't know. And that's, that's the thing that's kind of frustrating sometimes. It's like back in the day, you ha you'd have a New Jersey team, and it was like when the Leafs played New Jersey, it's like you take a penalty, they might score, and if they score, they're going to beat you one nothing. Yeah. So, like, no, for sure. Tucker – Tucker couldn't run around and be as effective as he could because he knew I can go to that line, but I can't yeah, surpass it. Exactly. And it, I don't know. But back to the original thing with the pad play, I think that the biggest problem with the rule is that if the puck is if if the puck was under his toe and pinned, yeah, and pushed in, I would have nothing to say. But the fact that the puck was loose and wobbling around. And Joe went to go push it at the same time he was pushed. Exactly as you said. I I don't think the force of what Joe did had any bearing on on uh, Murray being pushed. And if you actually take a screenshot, which I did, and you see where Murray's belly was, where he started and where he ended, he basically starts in the same spot and ends in the same spot. So in other words, he only twisted. So if you only twist that couple 40 degree angle whatever you're not being pushed into the net which is what the rule defines as so i that's the part i don't get is it's just like if the puck's loose and somebody's in that if i'm joe and i've been playing in the nhl since 1997 and i say to the refs like what and i ask for an explanation i personally would say fine whatever no problem but if i get myself in that same situation again how do I make sure it's a goal next time? Because if it is the last game of the season, yeah, you, four want, seconds it to left, you want it to matter, yeah. I want to know what I need to do or what I don't, what I can't be doing to make sure that I don't screw this up. So my question to that is, what could Joe have done differently in that exact situation to change that play to a goal? Pull back and shelf it while he's getting drilled in the back. Left. Well, he's and he knows because he knows there's you know not 1.2 seconds left and there's not 7.6 seconds left there's mm -hmm. you know just enough 4.4 you know 3.7 isn't quite enough time to go to your back end but you know 4.4 is okay no he's not thinking about those things in the it, it's it's just like saying oh why did you get in a car accident <laughs> well you, you know you weren't paying attention well of course i was freaking paying attention but this happened yeah you know so I don't know. I think that obviously rules are there to be black yeah. and white. So I'm not arguing them, but I think that they need to clarify this rule so that if this does happen to a Tampa Boston in the cup final, that there's precedent. There's something that they can go back to. So what were they talking about today? Like you said in the ra on the radio in Toronto, they were, were they were all over this one. Was it this specific yeah, goal well, they were talking about, or like they were basically just saying a lot of what I just said that. You know, the call was called correctly based on the rule. Book. Yeah. Okay. But based on this, based on that, there it's semantics and like it's it's a judgment call. Like if if and that's the thing with the NHL is that if a referee goes to the penalty box and admits I don't really know, they almost have to create like a little file case or a little like report of yeah. what happened in that incident. And then they have to record in their database like this incident so that they can use it for future reference. 
So it's like a whole process. So because that didn't happen, they now don't have this like stamp of a precedent of when something happened, but there's also no clarity on the rule. Of, like, it's not that there's no clarity on the rule because there is clarity on the rule. We all understand the rule, but it's the fact that what's the difference and when is it acceptable and why is it acceptable in the playoffs and what would Joe have done yeah, differently? Yeah, it'll be interesting when this kind like, of, like, it's pretty inevitable that this goal, this kind of goal style will happen again and probably this season. Yeah. It'll be interesting when we see it, how it'll be attacked. If it if it's consistent, then I guess the, 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 the issue is null, right? And the, what, what will probably happen, and if I know the NHL, is a similar goal will happen, and then they'll come out and they'll call it a goal, and then they'll be like, oh, well, yeah, because of that incident that happened that last time, where now we've added this sub-rule 1.652 saying yeah. that, or yes, maybe, maybe but they'll just if say no happened, goal every time. Maybe. Maybe. Or that maybe they do that. But my exact next question to you, then why the hell don't they just make the do same rule with the over the glass? Why don't they make these same rules with all of their rules where their judgment calls? Mm -hmm. If we're going to go black and white, let's go black and white. But they don't want to because they're afraid that if we go that way, there's you don't need referees, right? Other than to maybe split up fights and stuff like that. And there's been talk like maybe in the future there's one referee on the ice because there's more room for all the other bodies to skate around and stuff. Yeah, I've also like, I've of, often wondered like because I see more often than not lately definitely the way hockey's been evolving and the way they are getting crafty with moving pucks like the ref sometimes can't comprehend the the play in the way all the time. They get in the yep. ways a lot more recently it seems. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. So like an eagle eye ref yep. and like, the players are annoyed. Yeah, two refs on the ice, and then Eagle Eye in the Sky ref, who has all the angle, basically just in a room with <laughs> three-dimensional. But even that, like, what, what's stopping? I know I've mentioned this on a show before, where if you could put like a tracker within the puck, that if it goes across the line, it sets off a light where you know, okay, it's clearly a goal. Well, you can adapt that to offsides as well. You yeah. put trackers in people's blades. Well, when the blades are on the ice. If the puck goes over, the let like the buzzer goes off. Like there is no uh, interpretation delay or anything between players. It's a machine that says you were or you were not, mm. and that's not where I want to be. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Of course. But in a league that is struggling to grow, in a league that knows it struggles with casual fans, in a league that has had recent mistakes. And didn't really take ownership or clarify them. Um, I just don't get it. Like it was a perfect opportunity to just, you know, come out and say, like, you know, if this happens in the playoffs moving forward, we will call it this way. Like, there's no dispute. And even guy like guys like Craig Button, um, who has been a former GM in the league and stuff. Yeah. He he and watched lot watches lots and lots and lots of hockey. Even he said, like, yeah, it's the right call, but, like, it, it, if you add the equation together, it's not the right call. Right call live, right call in history, no. So, I mean, you have different people like that. Even Michael Landsberg on the AM show, was he, he was debating, um, I think it was James Duffy. He was, him and him, the two of them were going back and forth, and uh, Carlo Koliakovo. So former, yeah, former uh, James Duffy is the host of all the hockey shows. So yeah, he yeah. knows everybody and talks hockey all the time. He's a hockey nerd. And then you have Cole Yakubo, who's grown up and been a hockey player. And they basically all, all said too, like, yeah, no, it's the right call. But I mean, but what are you to do different? Yeah. Like, are you just going to be like, it's never a goal? Well, then what's the point going to the net at like, what, what's Joe doing? Like, I get the whole, I love the change to the rule that they did where like you touch the goalie, it's interference. Mm -hmm. But then we watch games and Freddie gets run over all the freaking time and there's never calls. So it's like, like, I don't, I, I'm not trying to be a homer there, but I feel bad for Freddie because Freddie gets run one, once a game all the time. Yeah. Like if I was him, I'd be fed up because I'd be like, you soft defense in front of me. You're going to see me get hit all the time and you're not going to do nothing about it. Finally, we got guys like Bogosian and Simmons to actually do something about it. But like, it's just frustrating when you see stuff like that and it's all interpretation, but then you have 12 different referees who all have their own interpretations. And it's like, 
you get into these different like i don't know i don't i think the ref should have had at least a committee meeting be like what did you see and then come out after the game and be like you know clarify the fact of what people are questioning yeah yes it was the right call but based on the circumstances and the fact that the puck was loose the fact there was a I mean, it doesn't really matter at the end of the period, but it just create it sets the scene to know why there's the urgency. Like without that level of urgency, without being on the power play or late in a period or game or something like that, that play is not even something yeah. that happens. Oh, totally. So, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's all right, you got your spiel out there. It's good. But you gotta be honest. You kind of changed my perspective of the goal a little bit. So got something on you can change I'm not yeah I'm not trying to change perspective no, like I, it, for me it's not a right thing like I, I I've already said like it's it was the right call but I just I'm worried about how this impacts in the future mm -hmm. and I'm worried about like like what At you said day, what happens just, if this happens seven? yeah we just want consistency like, in this league don't we right at the end of the day it's what we want we need to yep. we want consistency that's all we I want. want we want the fans that do come on because that's was part of the struggle for me with watching football in the beginning was all the freaking rules. Yeah. Um, but like just the consistency, we don't want the, the, a good ref. You're not going to notice them being there really. Right. And so that, I guess mm -hmm. when we're talking about the refs, there's something wrong. Exactly. So, and like, I mean, I, I, I said, I, I, I do hate referees. I've got an issue with them, but that's besides <laughs> the point. Um, but like all of this, when it really comes down to it, is coming from a jealous, a jealousy standpoint as a fan. Because if I need to break it down, the less money, the less people that care about the NHL, the less money comes into the NHL. The less money that comes into the NHL, the less money, the less money the NHL has. Yeah. The less money the NHL has, the less teams there are, the less games there are, the less that my team can pay my players to go on and play for them yeah and why the cap can't go up quicker and quicker and quicker especially in a situation like right now where i feel some teams have been screwed based on covid nothing you can do yep. but if, if the league's trying to recover money and stuff i want everything done right i want whatever done is needed to make whoever become a hockey fan now everyone's sitting at home yeah. looking for something to do i want their eyes too. on my like product if, if one... I know like, if you can get into it and figure it out, it's so exciting. Fast paced, physical, mm -hmm. it's crazy goals. Like it's everything you want in a sport. Yeah. You know, Even the fighting, like yeah. it's, it's literally a lot at almost every sport on mixed into one Yeah. and intense as hell. Usually and on a sheet of ice, unless you get a soft super team. fast. <laughs> so yeah. The, yeah. I'm with you. The more we can get it, make it accessible to the, average person and fans the, the better for everyone including this podcast like the mm -hmm. more people that are watching hockey exactly. well, yeah so exactly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think that pretty much is everything we have i think we were talking about before coming up in either next week or the week after we're gonna do probably the i'm thinking probably the week after it'll be around mid-season we'll yeah. do our mid-season predictions how things are going our our ranking uh, maybe we'll look into how the rookie race scoring is going because I know I'm a little bit invested with Tim Stutzla. Um, yeah. And yeah. We'll just... Every time I hear his name, I think about you. <laughs> and I, and I remember that first podcast? I didn't even know how to pronounce his name. So I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming along. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 All right. I know there's we'll some games on out there, so let's get out of there. Let's yeah, man. Watch it. So peace. Thanks for doing this. Sounds good. Later. Of course, man. Cheers.